This is Spanish Rivers EOC Biology Review Part 4. This review is going to focus on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We're going to combine these two very important life processes because they have something in common, and that is energy. Photosynthesis is how an organism can store energy and cellular respiration is how an organism can release energy. First, we're going to focus on photosynthesis. So what is this process of photosynthesis? Essentially, it's a transformation of energy from one form to another. It starts off with light energy from the sun in the form of photons. And that light energy is going to be converted to chemical energy in the form of glucose. The energy is going to be stored in the bonds of the glucose molecule. So what does this energy conversion? A plant leaf can do the energy conversion. They do it by the process of photosynthesis, but it takes more than just sunlight to get the job done. There are other ingredients that go into making sugar. We start off with our sunlight, and we have some raw materials. Okay, so our reactants are sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. The products of photosynthesis are oxygen, that's the byproduct of photosynthesis, and our important glucose molecule. Let's look at the entire photosynthesis equation. Our reactants are sunlight, six molecules of carbon dioxide combined with six molecules of water. This will yield six molecules of oxygen and only one molecule of glucose. Okay, let's take a closer look at the process. Photosynthesis occurs in the plant leaf and it is performed by these glucose making machines called chloroplast. If we zoom in on the chloroplast, we can look at the process in both parts. There are two parts to photosynthesis. The first part of photosynthesis, called the light dependent reaction, depends on sunlight. The other molecule involved in the light dependent is water. That sunlight is going to excite the electrons in the water molecule, splitting it. That water molecule, after it's split, is going to be broken up into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is going to be released as a byproduct. The hydrogen molecules are going to be combined with carbon dioxide in the second part of photosynthesis. The second part of photosynthesis is called the light independent reaction or the Calvin cycle. The carbon dioxide molecule is used. It combines with the hydrogen molecule from the water and we get our important product, glucose. The end result of photosynthesis is the energy stored in the bonds of the glucose molecule. This energy can be used to do cellular work, but it's trapped in the bonds of glucose. To release this energy from the bonds, we have to perform a very important process called cellular respiration. The cell will break down those glucose molecules and release the energy from the bonds. The products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. As I said earlier, they are related to each other. So we have the glucose and oxygen that was made during photosynthesis. Those products are going to be used in cellular respiration to get our energy out. 
Let's look at the cellular respiration equation. First we have the glucose molecule that we made in photosynthesis. That combined with six oxygen molecules is going to give us two byproducts. One is six molecules of carbon dioxide. The other is six molecules of water. And our important product, the ultimate product, ATP, this is the energy form that can perform cellular work. Okay, so cellular respiration can be performed in two processes. We have two different types, aerobic cellular respiration and anaerobic cellular respiration. Aerobic respiration is in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration is without oxygen present. Both of these types of cellular respiration will yield two ATP molecules in the first part of respiration. The first part occurs in the cytoplasm, and it's called glycolysis. Glyco means sugar. Lysis means to break. So that sugar molecule is first going to be broken down in the cytoplasm, and we can yield two ATP out there in the cytoplasm, with or without oxygen present. So let's take a look at cellular respiration in the cell. We have our cell here. We have the glucose molecule out in the cytoplasm. And it's next to a mitochondrion. This organelle is an important organelle used for cellular respiration. This is an ATP-making machine. So first, the first stage is glycolysis. It happens outside mitochondria. That glucose molecule is going to be broken down, and it'll release two ATP molecules. To yield more ATP, oxygen must be present. Now, why is that? That's because oxygen is the key to the door of the mitochondrion. If we have oxygen present and we get in that mitochondrion, we can yield 34 more ATP. This will give us a total of 36 ATP. With making our important energy molecule, we also have some byproducts. Our byproducts are carbon dioxide, oops, sorry, carbon dioxide and water. Just like your own respiration, when you respire, you breathe in oxygen, but you also let out carbon dioxide. With that carbon dioxide, you let out a little bit of water. You could tell if you breathe on a mirror, you will see some water molecules, a little condensation on that mirror. If you're out in the cold and you breathe out, you will see some condensation in the air. That is some water molecule coming out. So water molecules are always a byproduct of cellular respiration as well as carbon dioxide. Okay, so in aerobic respiration, we yield a total of 36 ATP. This is a very efficient process. That's a lot of ATP that we're making from just one glucose molecule. In anaerobic respiration, where there's no oxygen present, we yield the two ATP out in the cytoplasm during glycolysis, but that's where it ends. There's only two ATP made. Then the cell will perform fermentation. Depending on the type of cell that's carrying out this anaerobic respiration, will change which type of fermentation we see. If this occurs in muscle tissue, you will see lactic acid fermentation. If it is carried out by yeast cells, we will get some alcoholic fermentation. There's a relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. The products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. Photosynthesis is where we store energy. Cellular respiration is where we're going to release energy. So you will see it's almost like a cycle here. If we put some sunlight into this photosynthesis process happening in the chloroplast, that combined with some raw materials, carbon dioxide and water, we can get the products, our important glucose, and some oxygen. 
Now, oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis, but it's important here for cellular respiration because that's how we get in this mitochondria to yield many ATP. So glucose and oxygen will go into cellular respiration to yield some ATP. Okay, we're going to make a little chart here so we can combine the characteristics, excuse me, compare the characteristics of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. The organisms that perform each. For photosynthesis, that is performed by autotrophs. Auto means self, troph is to feed. So they are self-feeding organisms, organisms that can make their own glucose. Cellular respiration is performed by all organisms, autotrophs as well as heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are organisms that need to obtain their energy from other organisms. The organelle for each process, for photosynthesis, we have the chloroplast that will perform photosynthesis, and for cellular respiration, mitochondria. The reactants for photosynthesis are energy in the form of sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. For cellular respiration, the reactants used are glucose and oxygen. The products of photosynthesis are glucose and oxygen. And for cellular respiration, the products are energy, carbon dioxide, and water. As you can see, the products of one are the reactants of the other. The products of one are the reactants of the other. So there is a relationship. Energy is stored during the process of photosynthesis, and energy is released during cellular respiration. The most important product of photosynthesis is the glucose. That's where we get our stored energy. And the most important product of cellular respiration is the ATP. This is how we can release some energy to do cellular work. So now bonds have this stored energy. When you build something, when you synthesize, you make bonds and you store energy in those molecules. That's condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis. An example of this is photosynthesis. When you break something down, when it's decay, when you digest, when your cells do digestion, they break bonds and they release the energy stored inside. That is hydrolysis. An example of this is cellular respiration. So let's talk about this ATP molecule. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. This is a high energy molecule. It is essentially the battery of your cell. It provides energy for cellular work. There's different types of cellular work it can provide energy for. Mechanical work in the form of movement. Transport work, where we're pumping substances across the plasma membrane or chemical work, any type of metabolic reaction, whether it's condensation reactions, hydrolysis reactions, those are all uh, metabolic reactions. Hydrolysis of ATP, breaking down that ATP molecule, that's how we can release energy. Now that ATP molecule has a very high energy bond between the last two phosphate molecules. If we zoom in on this ATP molecule on the left, we have three phosphate molecules. As I said, the bonds that hold them together have energy stored inside. This bond here is a very high energy bond. Adenosine triphosphate, T-R-I, tri means three, has these three phosphate molecules. If we were to break off this last phosphate molecule to do energy, excuse me, to do cellular work, now we have adenosine diphosphate, di means two, so you have your two phosphate molecules and that last phosphate is going to be broken off to release energy for cellular work.